thanks for joining us on the Black Magic Stand. I'm here with Greg. Welcome, Greg. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. The, what we've seen in the last few years is that the worlds of AV and broadcast are getting closer together. I was just wondering, what is it that Black Magic does that could help us tackle the sort of common challenges of that kind of integration? So the convergence question is very, very interesting and it, it's very, very prevalent. And I think both industry learn from one another. Where Blackmagic's force is, I think, is its adaptability and its innovative you know, thinking. So there's a lot of new features, a lot of new ways to interact with our system that's both beneficial for the AV industry and the broadcast industry. And I think that's where our force is at the moment. Yeah, I mean, there's not many companies like yourself that really sit exactly perfectly in the middle of kind of pro AV and broadcast, is there? Um, uh, what features do you guys offer kind of AV professionals that could help them kind of streamline the workflows? Because I guess that's a, probably a common request, right? So at the moment, there's a fair few things. I think there's intelligence within the product. So features like the webcam output on some of our uh, live production devices, which is coming prevalent in most of our product, that's really useful. It, it seems simple, but it's very, very useful. We have uh, more file workflows, so now iPodX are able to read and record directly from a network folder share. All of these little things, which are might not appear to be the main feature of the product, really become incredibly interesting for the AV industry. Yeah. And, and a final question, for those looking at you know, watching this, so looking at using kind of IP workflows and stuff, how can Blackmagic help, especially with like, what kind of 2110 products have you got that can help kind of produce kind of high quality video, but you know, kind of maybe don't have the huge budget? So 2110 is very, very interesting for us. And IEC is very interesting because we see adoption of 2110 that's a bit quicker than in the other industries like okay. broadcast. I think it's a bit more nimble, it's a bit more, it's a bit more quick to, to adapt. What we are doing is that we're pro proposing 2110 products that can work in one of three ways. You can use them point to point, which is practical because cabling is a bit more affordable because now you're talking about RJ45, not SDI. Yeah. Um, the point to point aspect as well is interesting because it allows you to then tack on some other 2110 equipment and have a larger infrastructure. You can use them in a, in a larger 2110 compliant infrastructure, which we're compliant to, uh, but that has caveats and difficulties or you know requirements so you need quick quick and good thinking about your network infrastructure and then the last method of implementation which i would you know prefer is black magic design only infrastructure where this is interesting is that it allows us to transport high quality signal across a 10 gigabit per second and it does away with some of the absolute requirement that 2110 has. So you don't absolutely need a PTP clock, you don't need an NMOS uh, intelligence because it's built into the products. So this makes for a very cohesive and coherent uh, infrastructure and it gives you the ability to grow with the system because we're, we will still be compliant with 2110. So if ever you want to have other manufacturers, larger infrastructure, that is possible. Yeah, I mean, we, we, as a magazine, we've been trying to push our readers to kind of look at NDI and 2110 going forward and we absolutely need manufacturers like Black Magic. It's great to hear that you guys are kind of pushing that. So um, Greg, many thanks for your time. It's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Have a good show.